Step-by-step -step guide, setting up Salesforce connected app for easy OAuth integration. Welcome to another video in this security series. We're gonna be diving deep into OAuth and one of the key elements to setting that up is having the connected app configured. We're gonna be working our way deeper, but we're gonna to start today with just the very basic steps for setting up a connected app in Salesforce and being able to access it from Postman using the API. We're gonna start by going to App Manager right here. And what we're gonna be doing is to enable access from an external, through the API, we're gonna create a new connected app. And then we're gonna call it App One. We're gonna give it an email. And, to, and what we are gonna do is we're gonna enable OAuth settings. Now, certain OAuth flows require a callback URL. We'll be addressing those in those subsequent videos. For now, we need to put a value. So I'm just gonna put www.salesforce.com. This is just a dummy email address. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna decide on the scopes. The scopes determine what capabilities can be done through this API. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, manage the user data via the APIs. So this is the only scope that we're gonna give, managing user data. And then what we're gonna do is, let's go ahead and not enter anything else and hit save. We need to add a proper UR HTTPS protocol. And Hit save. And now this will take about 10 minutes in order to process. Now, while we wait for the 10 minutes, we need two key pieces of information that be, uh, are not publicly shared. It's called the consumer details, the customer key and the customer secret. What we're gonna do is we're gonna press this button and we're gonna then authenticate. And I have successfully authenticated. And now I have my, cons for app one, for the app we just created, I have the consumer key and the consumer secret. Now I am over on Postman. And on Postman, I'm gonna be creating a post call to the auth server, which is login.salesforce.com, services OAuth, to slash token. And then in the body, I'm gonna have a series of parameters. The grant type, which is password. The client ID, which we need to get from here. So I'm gonna take the consumer key and I'm gonna paste it here. And then I'm gonna then get the customer secret here and put it here. So what I now have is the grant type, the client ID, the client secret. I have a username and a password. And what this will do is I'm gonna be doing a post against the OAuth endpoint. And this will then allow me to make a call to authenticate. So the time should have been passed and we can look right here. So we have our connected app and it's telling me that the warning is gone and I'm gonna go back to the manage the connected app and I'm on app one. And now what I can do is go to Postman. And so I'm gonna have a grant type of password, the client ID, the client secret. I have created a new API user and I'll be changing the password after this video. And this will then make a call to authenticate. And so here, I have now successfully authenticated into my sandbox using the username password flow. Now in subsequent videos, we'll be talking about why Salesforce is de-emphasizing or even disabling the use of the username and password flow. But for now, we have this access token here and I'm gonna actually gonna go to a query. Now I have a custom object called OA Airport. And from other videos, we're gonna go here. I brought in data of airports. 
and from API calls. So this is a list of airports. And what I'm gonna be doing is going and I'm gonna be calling the services data query endpoint, retrieving the ID and name from OA airport in this sandbox. Now a key element is you take, this is your response for the OAuth username and password flow. You get an access token, which is the token you need. You know what instance you should be calling, which in this case is stevetecharc.my.salesforce. You know the ID and the you get a bearer token when it's issued and you get the digital signature, which allows you to verify that this, um, that this access token response has not been altered. Now what I can do is you take your access token and you go to your query request and in its header, you have an authorization line and you have the word bearer and then space and then you paste in your token. So now I'm gonna hit send and now I have created a query retrieving airport data. So this is a successful authenticate and this right here with my access token and a successful query using Steve TechArc Travel services data. Now I think we're on the 58 endpoint. Let's see if it's active. There's 55. Let's see, we were at 58. There we are. So there's the 58, version 58 endpoint, retrieving the data. So back here is my connected app endpoint and it's gonna show me that it has just the basics. It doesn't have all the, some of the additional flow elements such as a web server flow callbacks right now, but it is sufficient for this first step and we'll be enhancing it in subsequent um, videos. So those are the basic steps to have OAuth, Postman, reach in, coming through the APIs, create the connected app, um, the callback URL is required, but not necessary for this particular flow. And then we're gonna let it process for its 10 minutes. We're gonna get the consumer key and the consumer secret. We're gonna carry them over to Postman and we're gonna do the authenticate call against the auth endpoint. We're gonna grab the access token, put it in the header, and now we're able to call a full wide range of APIs on the Salesforce side. These are the bare bones steps and in subsequent videos for additional flows, we'll be layering additional functionality. I hope this was helpful. So hope you stay connected with the Connected app and join us again, same bat time, same bat channel. Subscribe to, on YouTube for Steve TechArc and www.stevetechark.com and have a great day.